there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I have a painting tutorial by request. We're going to do a Stargazer Lily, and I'm actually going to sketch my uh, design in with a colored pencil. And I'm using the Primo watercolor pencils, which are really nice. Uh, if you don't have any yet, they're a, uh, they're a great way to start off. They have um, six different sets, and I will warn you, there are some duplications between the sets, so you'll want to kind of look around and see what you want. If you buy all six sets, you only have 48 colors. Um, there's a skin tone set which is really good for um, even if you have a regular set of colored pencils and you want to augment the skin tones, that's really good. And the basic set is really vivid, almost like the ink tents. Um, but they're, you know, 11 bucks a set at Hallmark. They're like 13 everywhere else. But it's I'll put a link below to Hallmark because they have the, the best prices on these and they do have a full stock of them right now. Um, but I just wanted to let you know if you don't have any, they're a great value because, you know, you know, are just quality pencils and they do get very expensive. So I've started off with an oval, the size I want my lily to be, and I'm going to start putting on some petals. This is going to hang over a little bit. What I like to do is get the three larger overlapping ones in first. And the reason I'm doing gray is because I think I want kind of like a little bit of a grayish background. And I also think it will kind of like wash away to next to nothing. And the edges of a stargazer lily um, are white. So I really wanted to make sure I can kind of get rid of them when I go to uh, when I go to paint. And then I'm going to get these narrower ones in there. And this was a request. So um, I do check my request page on my blog. And sometimes they come in Facebook and, you know, sometimes they come as comments, but my comments have been acting really weird on YouTube lately and I and my feed has been frozen. I haven't been able to see new comments unless I'm checking each individual video and I have over a thousand videos, so I only check the most recent ones. So if you are trying to uh, leave a comment, leave, make sure you leave it on the most recent video or on my blog because I always see my blog comments. I'm just throwing a few leaves in here. All right, I've got the basic shape and that's really all I need for right now. I think maybe I'll take this light. Oh, you know what? I also like to leave my pencils out that I'm using so that way I can go back to them if I need to. I'm just going to throw in indication of a few stamens in here just so I, you know, I have that idea. And I could even go in with like the, uh, the center color of these flowers and get that. And you can see how soft these pencils are. They're really delightful, I have to say. Um, and, you know, if you're going to buy a set of 12 pencils, you know you're going to pay 20 or $30 for, you know, artist quality pencils at the art shop. Uh, these are a good, really good quality. I don't know about light fastness. I haven't had any issues with them fading, but I haven't used them that long. Um, but they they seem to be a really, really nice pencil. So, you know, you go ahead, fill it in with colored pencils or go ahead and use your watercolor paints. I think I'll use watercolor paints just because I want to... Um, I want to wet the background and get rid of my lines that I don't need and put in kind of a wash of color there. So I'm going right up to my lines because I want to kind of dissolve them. I'm just going to set that right out of the way there. Um, and I'm just working on a scrap of Cotman paper. It's not my favorite paper, but it's not a bad paper either. It's fairly affordable. Um, some craft stores will have it. Some of the big store craft stores will have it. Usually art supply stores will have it. It's, um, I think it's only like 25% cotton as opposed to 100% cotton. Um, so it's kind of like a bridge. It's between like a student and a, um, and a professional grade. Certainly good for these quick little sketches. It's about the same as the Strathmore 300, I'd say. Given the choice, I would pick this over Strathmore 300, but I pick a Strathmore 400 over Cotman. So if you're in the store and you're looking and you can see if the price of the, the Strathmore 400 is less than the Cotman, I'd go with the Strathmore 400. Arches is my favorite if you are curious. Um, but I don't always use that because sometimes it's just not, it's not needed, you know? Um, it's just like you wouldn't use... Um, I don't know. It's like it's like you want to pick the right paper for the job. You don't need like a crazy huge power tool to, you know, snip the back off of a button or something. I don't know. I I can't. I'm having a hard time with words. <laughs> All right. So I kind of want this bluish um, background. I think I'm gonna go with a little bit. Why don't I go with cerulean? I don't use cerulean blue very often. It's such a soft blue. I think I'm gonna go with that. And I think I'm just gonna kind of drip it in around the flower. I'm using a Princeton Neptune here. You can use whatever you want. Um, this is the only one I have of this line of brushes, and it's a synthetic sable, so it doesn't contain any animal hair, 
but it really acts like it does. It's got a nice snap to it. It's super thirsty, absorbent. Look at all the paint I can hold. Um, it carries a lot of water for doing a wash. I think I may invest in some more of these, but I have a lot of brushes. It's really, <laughs> it's really hard to, to justify getting more, but I really like this because it's a filbert. It can come to a really fine point. It's actually called the Cat's Tongue Filbert. Um, it comes to a really fine point. It's the half inch. Um, but I can also like flatten it out and get a really wide wash. So this is kind of like if I had to pick one brush to do like a landscape with, um, this would be it. it would not so much to do a floral just because I wouldn't be able to get in. I would be almost carrying too much water uh, in a lot of instances. So I want to be careful about that. But it really is a nice brush. If you're looking for a splurge or a gift for an artsy friend, then um, check out the Princeton Neptune line. I also really like, I'm going to use some Aqualons by Royal. Those are um, another favorite. They're probably my favorite just because they're, I find them a little bit more useful. But, uh, but both of these are really nice brushes. All right. And I'm just trying to decide how far out I want to let this background go. You can see where the paper is dry. This is another question I get. Um, people saying their, their watercolor shifts too much or it, um, it, is their lines aren't crisp. If you're working on wet paper, you're going to have fuzzy lines. If you're working on dry paper, you're going to have crisp lines. That's why I typically start with um, wet paper when I want my backgrounds to be fuzzy and whatnot, and then I gradually I add detail to dry paper, you know, so that my paper gets drier and drier the, the more I go. And if I have to go back in, like to extend a wash, I will generally wet over the paper I've already wet, just because if I don't, the, where you have areas of your paper that's drier than the others, you're going to get backwash. Did I mention the painting? Um, uh, the photo I'm working from is from Paint My Photo. Um, they are moving their website because they've gotten a huge um, rash of new people, which is awesome, but they needed a, a more, um, they needed a website that could handle that. So I'll put a link to the directly, to the photo directly so you can check it out. I highly recommend you join once they get the, once they start taking members again. It's such a wonderful resource. Um, I can't say enough about it. They're great people and they do this all for free. So totally awesome. The photographers that donate their photos, the artists that share their work, it's just a great community. And Highly recommended. I wish I could spend more time over there, but um, unfortunately, I can't. And I'm busy. All right, so I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer, and we'll be back to paint the lily. All right, I also get asked a lot whether it matters if you use a hair dryer or a heat gun to dry your watercolor paintings. It does not matter one bit. Use whatever you have, or just let it air dry. Nothing. It's it's not going to affect it either way. Um, so I've got a little bit of um, I believe this is rose matter or permanent rose or any sort of rose is going to be fine for this, honestly. And um, I'm going to go in and just kind of add this to the middle of my flower. I'm just going right over my um, watercolor pencils. If you have only watercolor pencils. Go ahead and just liquefy what you've already put down. Maybe put down a little bit more before you liquefy. And then I am going to go around the edges with a damp brush. Go right up to it so it can spread out a little bit. I missed a little part of the background in there. I'm going to have to touch that up. I just have to... So that's why there's that little white space. I, I made a mistake there. I didn't, didn't put the background color in there. It's not a big mistake. It's an isolated little area. I'll be able to put that in. Now I want to show you something really cool. If you have the watercolor pencils, you can go in and you can add the veining like this. If not, you can use a credit card scraper and go in and do that. You'll, you know, and then the paint will just settle in there. But I just think that's a really fun technique. And then you can also add those little spots just by pressing your pencil into the wet paper. Isn't that cool? It really takes a lot of work out of the um, out of the painting, it gives you a nice effect, and it's quick and easy. So give that a try if you get a chance. You could also use brown for this because those specks are kind of brownish, almost like a rust color um, as well. So whatever you want to use is absolutely fine. I want this a little bit darker in there, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more pencil. Again, go ahead and use add, add paint if you want. I'm just giving you a couple different opportunities there, a couple different ideas. And you could also wet the paint, wet the petal first. Let's do that on this one. I'll wet the petal and then we'll add the paint just to show you. So if I were to use a Neptune for this step, I think I would get way too much water and I would get paint that was, that was too light and 
it also might kind of spill into the background if I got a really thick bead of water there. So I just wanted to kind of let you know what would happen. But of course, the way you'll learn the best is by experimenting yourself. And there's really no substitute for that. You can watch all the tutorials in the world, but until you actually try it for yourself, it's really not going to make a lot of sense. I'm going to go in again with my pencil because I really like this technique. I did a, I did a large, long painting of orchids using the same technique. And um, if you want more information, I will try to remember to link that up. And I'm going to do this exact same thing to all of my petals. I actually think I like wetting it first just because it's, I think it's a little bit quicker. I am doing one petal at a time though, just because it's a little, you don't have to worry about it drying on you. I think that's the uh, the big thing. And I kind of skip it around, skip around so I don't have the petals kind of bleeding into each other too much. Like that might bleed into that first petal, so I have to be careful there. So if you want to, you know, stop and let things dry or get your hair dryer out, then that would be great. See right there, you can see where it's kind of bleeding in there. A lot of times I can correct that just by blotting it with a paper towel. And I'm not going to worry about it too much, but that's why you kind of skip around a little bit. And let's get my pencil and add those those lines in. I think uh, doing a flower like this with the with the um, white edge is a little tricky. You, your background really helps define it. But again, it's it, it's almost easier if you have a nice crisp edge that you can that you can work on. All right, I'm going to work on the um, the stem and leaves down here. Um, I think I'm actually going to use some sap green for this rather than than mixing because I do like nice fresh sap green. That's this color right there. You can see that. And I want it to be pretty bold, so I think I'm actually going to go right in on the um, on the dry paper and for a darker color I'm going to add a little bit of the cobalt in there hopefully that's dark enough to darken it because cobalt is such um, an opaque timid color oh, I think that's fine add this uh, one here this one was folded over So I'll get this bottom part of the petal first where it's folded over the leaf rather. I think I'll add a little bit of yellow to this part here with, into the sap green so it's a little bit lighter. I love having a palette that has a large mixing area so if your palette doesn't, if you have like a, a white plate or even just a piece of like plastic from some packaging, you can use that for a, uh, for a mixing area. I feel like this should be longer, even though it's not in the picture, and it's kind of pointing the other direction. I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat. I'm gonna change it a little bit, make it a little bit longer. It looks a little awkward. Let me add a little bit of. I'm gonna add some speckles to this anyway, so you don't have to do that. I know that freaks some of you guys out. Hopefully that stem. Yeah, that seems to be pretty dry. And we've got another little leaf up here. I should have paid a little more attention when I was drawing the leaves because, you know, I was looking at the picture. Sometimes, you know, the way things are, you know, it could have been a leaf from another flower. And now I feel like that doesn't make as much sense as I was hoping that it would. I'm going to grab my pencil. Even though this is a little bit lighter, I'm just going to add a little bit of detail to them. Define it a little bit. Okay, and then when that dries, I'll put that blue in there that I missed before. Uh, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to be careful to not put too much here because I've got that, um, I've got the green stamens that are going to come out from there. So I'm going to be quite careful in there. In fact, I think I'm going to go in with my pink and just kind of be very, very gentle around here. Maybe even just kind of leave some space for the green. So I'm going in on dry paper because I really want to be able to control it. Painting the negative space kind of just around the stamens. And then I'll go in with my um, 
damp brush and smooth it and let it blend out till it gets to the light of the edge. And I'll throw in just a little bit of detail. I don't want to put too much there because the stamens are going to be there. Now let's do those remaining two petals. I think we're going to finish this up in, tw in uh, 20 minutes or less. That's good. Wiping off some of that uh, that green that I speckled in there. And these are such small petals that I can just kind of go in, put my color, and then blend them out, and then have plenty of time to uh, go in there with the pencil. I've actually been doing a lot of painting lately, but not painting tutorials because I've been working on a freelance project for somebody else. So it's like, I've been getting a lot of requests for, um, for painting tutorials. It's like, what do you mean? I'm painting all the time. And it's like, oh yeah, that's not my YouTube life. That's another project I'm working on. That's all right. I figured I would start the day with this today. I have a, another painting tutorial coming up. I don't know when it's going to be published. It's a, uh, it's a long one. It is a sponsored one, so it's I gotta kind of wait for approval with those. If I need to add a little bit of um, definition, I can go ahead and do that with this pink. Define some of the edges, even though the edges are right white. If I do need that little bit of definition, I would just go ahead and add it just like that. I mean it. Sometimes you have to do what's going to be best for your painting and not really worry so much about how accurate it is. All right, so I'm going to go to that small brush again, that same one I've been using for the flower, and I'm going to pick up this yellowy green color. It's a sap green plus lemon yellow. I'm going to paint in my stamens. Let's get that one in the middle done first. Oops, I went a little too long on that one. There we go, that's all right. And then I'm gonna just paint in the others, wherever I've left space. I won't have as many as the uh, as the picture has, but that's all right. Sometimes you just gotta kinda hint to something, not really worry about having the exact thing. And then if I do, if you do need to fix something, if I have one around here, I could show you well. Oh, I'm looking for a tiny little scrubber brush. I don't have it right here, but you can use like a little oil painting brush and just kind of scrub out some of the uh, some of the underlying colors. Like I might be able to just kind of go in there and lift out some of that red. I really need to scrub it if I'm going to do that. Or in worst case scenario, you can go in with like a little bit of a white painting, like a white pencil. All right, I'm going to use red and green mixed together to make my brown. The same green I've been using, the same um, reddish color. I'm going to go ahead and just dot that right in there. I try not to bring in new colors if I don't have to because I think it looks a lot better if I don't. And even if you don't have a stem to it, as long as you put those ends in, they'll look like they're connected to something. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon. Um, I'm going to take a lemon and red, make kind of an orange, and drop that in there because I feel like it's a little too green. That will just kind of give me a little bit different of a color. And that pretty much does it. I hope you enjoyed this quick and easy painting tutorial of a stargazer lily. Uh, please share it with your friends on Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, or wherever you like to share things. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I want to thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting.